Hello students, how are you feeling after having known the concepts of sensation, attention, perception? Hasn't it been an interesting journey through chapter 5 class 11 psychology? Today we come to the last video lesson of this chapter. This part 6 shall deal with perceptual cues and illusions. We will cover perceptions of space, depth and distance and then move on to geometrical illusions. The visual field or surface in which things exist, move or can be placed is known as space. We live in a 3D space where there are different dimensions to objects. They are deep, they are long and short, they are also towards their left and right. However, the images that are formed on the retina of a human eye are only in two dimensions that is up and down and right and left. We perceive not only the spatial attributes of size, shape and direction of objects but also another concept that is the distance between these objects. Now whenever I sees things in two dimensions how are we able to perceive them in three dimensions? The images of objects projected on our retina are 2D. We perceive them in 3D. How? Our ability to transform a two-dimensional retinal image into a three-dimensional perception is unique. This is known as depth perception or distance perception. This is the process of viewing the world in three dimensions. Depth perception is very important to us. For example, when we drive an automobile on the road, we are able to know how far is another vehicle from us and how much of distance should we keep from vehicles which are on our left and right. This is because of depth perception. If you see a friend walking down the road and you wish to call him or her, with how much of loudness should you speak so that your voice reaches them is another use of how we perceive depth in our world. The sources of information that help us perceive depth are known as cues. They help us in judging distance and depth. They also change a 2D image into the 3D perception. Let us talk of these cues. Some of them use only one eye. Some others are required to use both of our eyes to be able to see the distance between objects and the concept of depth. These are not very well developed in very small children and therefore you would see that the child tries to get further into a bed and falls from the bed. Why? Because the child is not able to perceive the third dimension of how high the bed is. For the child, the surface is all in two dimensions and therefore the next step should lead to the step in the direction of the wall or the bed and not towards the floor. As we grow older, our concepts are strengthened and the perception of depth becomes clearer in our minds. This is done with the help of monocular and binocular cues. What are monocular cues? As is clear from the name, these are the cues that use only one eye for help. These are psychological cues. They are effective when objects are viewed with one eye. They are used by artists to induce depth in a 2D painting and therefore they are called pictorial cues. Let us study some of them. The first one being relative size. Size of a retinal image allows us to judge the distance of the image. An image which is nearer to our eye forms a larger size on our retina and as the image moves farther from us the size formed on the retina decreases. Hence, from experience we know that objects which appear smaller to us are placed farther away in the distance. In the picture on your screens, you shall be able to know which buildings are nearer and which are farther away from the photographer. Why? Because the buildings that are farther are seen as relatively smaller ones. The second concept is that of interposition or overlapping. 
objects which are nearer to us overlap the objects which are farther away from us. In this picture, you will say that the girl is nearer to you and the mountains or the houses are farther away because the girl overlaps the houses and the houses overlap the mountains in turn. Painters very often use this cue to give us the perception of near and far, to give us the perceptions of three dimensions in a two dimensional painting. When you see straight or linear lines, they seem to converge as they increase in the distance from you. This is the monocular cue of linear perspective. You see the rail tracks and they seem to converge as they get farther from you. On your screens, you are looking at rail tracks and lines of plants which are both straight. But as they get farther, they seem to be converging, thus giving you the perception of distance. Aerial perspective is a monocular cue that relies on the dust particles and moisture in the atmosphere. The things which are farther away appear to be vague and non-clear. The mountains which are away from you look blue because of the scattering of light in the atmosphere. As you get nearer these mountains, they appear to be brown or green in color. So in paintings, things which are to be shown far away are shown to be a little ambiguous or non-clear. Light and shade cues are also monocular cues used very extensively by photographers and painters to give you the perception of depth in two-dimensional objects. Objects which are darker are nearer. As they get far away, the shades get lighter. This is evident from the examples shown on your screen. Relative height is very important when it comes to cues that help you perceive depth. Nearer objects are taller or longer and objects that are far away seems to be shorter in height. This is related to the cue of relative size. Here the size diminishes only in height, whereas when you were talking of the cue of relative size, the diminishing of the size happens in all the dimensions. Texture gradient is very interesting monocular cue. Things which are equally spaced tend to be seeming to getting more dense and the intensity increases as they are far away. On your screens you are seeing two pictures of flowers and of leaves. They are all equally spaced but when they are nearer to you they seem to be more spacing and as they get far away the spacing reduces and the density of flowers and leaves increases thus giving you a clear perception of distance. The seventh monocular cue is that of motion parallax. It is a kinetic cue and therefore it is not a pictorial one. When the objects are far away from us, they appear to be moving slowly and when they come nearer, the speed is perceived fast. Also, objects which are nearer to you seem to be moving in opposite directions. For instance, when you are going somewhere in a bus or a train, nearer objects seem to be moving in an opposite direction. As you get far away from them, the direction is same as the direction of the moving white. This kinetic cue is also very important that helps you perceive depth, distance of objects. These were the psychological cues that used one eye. There are some others which use both the eyes to give you the perception of depth. These are known as the binocular cues. These are physiological cues and as they are provided with both the eyes, they have biological basis. Let us look at some of them. Retinal disparity. By knowing the functioning of eye, you very well know that both the eyes are located at different locations in your head. They are separated by a horizontal distance of about 6.5 centimeters. Hence, the image formation of same objects on both the eye retinas is slightly different. This difference is known as retinal disparity. The brain uses the information about the retinal disparity to perceive distance. If there is more disparity between the retinal images of both the eyes, then the objects are perceived to be far away. As the disparity decreases, the objects are perceived to be nearer to the people. Thus, with the help of both the eyes, 
and retinal formations on retinas of both the eyes. You are able to perceive distances and depths. The next important binocular cue that helps you perceive depth is the cue of convergence. Having studied the functioning and the structure of the human eye, you now know that when the eye has to look at an object which is very close to it, it has to converge inwards. For example, if this pen is placed very near to my eye, the both eyes are converging inwards to be able to look at this object. When this object moves farther away, the eyes tend to move outwards. This angle of convergence is perceived by the brain to be able to give you the perception of depth. The brain is able to see these cues of how much of convergence has happened and thus it says if more the convergence, more near the object. If the convergence of the eyes is lesser, they are moving outwards, then your brain tells you that this object is farther away from you. The third binocular cue is that of accommodation. You know that to focus image on retina, we use ciliary muscles. When an object is nearer, the muscles are stretched and they contract and the eye lens thickens. However, to look at the objects which are far from the eye, the muscles are relaxed and the lens gets flattened. This degree of contraction and relaxation of the ciliary muscles and the degree of thickness or flatness of the eye lens is sent to the brain by the optic nerve. The brain then uses these cues to tell you if the object is far or near. So now you see that it is not only the monocular cues but also the physiological binocular cues that use both your eyes to send messages to your brain that help you in perceiving depth and distance. But friends, does this tell you we are very accurate in perceiving our visual things? No. At times we falter. At times we misinterpret the stimuli in the environment. For example, if you are moving around in a night in a lonely jungle and suddenly a rope is touching your feet, you will immediately scream thinking that it is a snake. It was a rope but you perceived it to be a snake. This is illusion. Why did this happen? Because you misinterpreted the visual cue or the sensory cue of that was given by your skin to your brain. Thus, sometimes we fail to interpret sensory information correctly. We all experience such things. These are therefore known as primary organizations or illusions. They can be experienced by any sense modality that is ear, skin, tongue. But the psychologists have most clearly and most intensively studied the visual illusions. By definition, illusions are the misperceptions resulting from misinterpretation of information received by our sense organs. Sometimes they are universal in nature, that is, they remain permanent and are not influenced by factors like fatigue, experience or practice. These are experienced by all of us. At other times, they might be personal in nature, where some people experience an illusion and others do not and they vary from situation to situation. Let us look at some of the universal illusions. The first ones being geometrical illusions. They are seen by humans, even by children, birds and animals. Most popular ones in geometric illusions is the molar liar illusion. On your screens, you see three equal lines, but you will say that the line on the right is the longest. However, that on the left is the shortest. Why? Because of the shape of the arrows which are enclosing these lines. When the arrows are pointing inwards, the lines are perceived to be smaller. And with arrows pointing outwards, the lines are seen as lengthier. This is a universal illusion because all the people shown these lines will most of the times inadvertently perceive them as longer and shorter, the distance and the length being the same. Horizontal vertical illusion is another popular universal illusion. Here on your screen, 
you see two lines, one placed horizontally, another placed vertically. You will immediately remark that the vertical line is longer than the horizontal one. However, on your right is shown a scale which tells you very clearly that the horizontal line and the vertical line are same in length. Rubens was is another universal geometric illusion. Here some people will see two faces on the right and the left and the others will see one was in the middle. When you look at this image again and again sometimes you see faces and sometimes a vase. This is a very interesting illusion to look at. Spinning vortex illusion patterns. There are many of them. You see them in your games and when you are playing in your school or at your home. Here by looking at each of these pictures individually you will be perceiving them as moving. These are static patterns which are perceived by human eye as moving owing to the color or the structure how they are arranged. Apart from static or geometrical illusions, we also have apparent movement illusions. These are also known as the phi phenomenon. When some motionless pictures are projected one after another at an appropriate rate and they give you a sense of motion, then it is known as the apparent movement illusion. You see most of your animated cartoons with the help of this illusion. In a cinema hall, certain static pictures are shown so quickly in succession that they are perceived as moving. Also, sometimes you get these books which as children you might have seen on which there is a cricketer bowling and certain static images of this crit cricketer are given on each page of the book. When you turn it very quickly, you perceive as if he is running and bowling. These are apparent movement or phi phenomenon. Having conducted a lot of experiments on the phi phenomenon, the famous psychologist Vardaima says that there has to be a particular presence in terms of the level of brightness, size, spatial gap and temporal contiguity to be able to result into apparent movement illusions. If these levels are altered, then the motion illusion will vanish and the pictures will be seen as simple static cues. Friends, isn't illusions an interesting concept? On your screens, you see some of more illusions. In the first one, there are two triangles. They are both equal in area and height. However, you will perceive the triangle on your left to be taller than that on your right because of the way different colors and patterns are arranged inside this triangle. In the second one, it is a 2D picture giving you a 3D effect. Only with the help of altering certain colors, you are able to see the perception of depth telling you that these are stairs and not simple squares. In the third picture, you are able to perceive the patterns as moving, whereas they are just static rectangles put into black and white color. If illusions intrigue you, you will be able to find many more of them in certain books which are play books or even academic books. You come across so many illusions in your life daily. After having seen these interesting concepts, you will be better able to appreciate the processes of sensation, attention and perception, all of them together which make the process of cognition and help you make sense of the world around you. The world is not perceived by us as it is. However, we engage in its construction based upon the stimulus characteristics and our own perceiver characteristics. Thus now you know that the reality is not same for everyone. It is a relative concept owing to how you are perceiving certain stimuli. After this interesting chapter, you will now more relish looking at things around you and understanding how your brain is making you see sense in those things. Thank you.